Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Esselamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve berekatuhu. Allahumme salli ve sellem ve barik ala sayyidina ve nebiyyina ve mirina ve mevlana ve şefaina ve habibina Muhammed. Toha Yasin Hamim Khatim Nabiyyin al-Mursal al-Rahmatil al-Alamin min Rabbil Alamin sallallahu aleyhi ve aleyhi ve sellem. Selamun ala cami al-Anbiya'i ve Mursalin ve cami malayikati mukarribin ve adan al-Kisa ve ala al-Bayt al-Kilam ve ashabihi muklasin ve tabayin ve tabayhim ve avliya la sulihin ve ulama mutakin ve şuhada mutahadin ve cami'a mashaykhina ve rabbina mashidina ila Allahi ta'ala Subhanu rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun ve salamun ala mursalin ve alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ve amma ba'd Alhamdulillah This can be considered an introduction to talks which you will find uh, on your computer or your tablet. And uh, these talks uh, were given uh, originally in Canada in the month of May. All of these talks are concerned with the same subject, which is really the essence of it is uh, now is the time of the Qa'im. This is a new age that we're living in. We're living at the end of one dawr, one cycle, and the beginning of a new cycle. This is the cycle of the Qa'im. But we say, now is the time of the Qa'im, don't look back. What do we mean by this? We mean that what we're speaking about is the total elimination first in ourselves and then in our families and then in our neighborhoods and so forth which are possibilities for the total elimination of injustice and oppression which is presently prevailing in the world this is uh, why we say don't look back because looking back we see a situation which is very depressing indeed very sorrowful, uh, it breaks our hearts to see what's going on, Muslims killing Muslims, and so on and so forth. As you know, we find in Sahih Muslim, in Book 31, in Hadith number 6219, Sahih, the definition by the Prophet of a Muslim, and he says, quote, in English, I'm translating, a Muslim is the brother of another Muslim. He neither oppresses him, nor humiliates him, nor looks down upon him. The, the, the taqwa is here. He said this three times. The taqwa is here, the taqwa is here, the taqwa is here. Taqwa is a very difficult word to translate. We could say consciousness of Allah, we could say piety, there are many different things of what it means. But I prefer the consciousness of Allah is here. And the Prophet ﷺ went on to say that it is a serious evil, and he used the word evil, for a Muslim that he should look down upon his brother, Muslim. All things of a Muslim are inviolable for his brother in faith, his blood, his wealth, his relationships, and his honor. End of quote. We have special responsibilities towards our brothers and sisters in Islam that we do not have actually towards non-Muslims. And the rights of Allah come first. And the rights of Allah include the treatment that we give to our brothers and sisters in Islam. We are to consider the Muslim first and foremost regardless of our relationship, regardless of our color, regardless of our language, regardless of where we come from in the world, this person for us is sacred to us in his or her faith, blood and honor. And when we find Muslims killing other Muslims, 
which is what we find now in Syria, what we find now in Iraq, what we find now in uh, Somal, what we find in Yemen, what we find in Sudan, what we find in Libya, what we find in Egypt, what we find in Mali, what we find in Mauritania, what we find in against the Boko Haram in Nigeria, for instance. It's Haram. But what to do? So, those of you who regularly visit this website, notice perhaps that, you know, for six months or so, we have not given any public talks. And that is because I've been thinking and studying very deeply about this subject and trying to think of a way forward. We know the way backwards, but that's not going to get us anywhere. What we need is a way that is forwards, which gives people hope, which gives a hope indeed that every persecuted individual and every oppressed person that it is possible to change the state of affairs. That the forces of justice have to face the world that is filled with injustice and oppression and to prevail upon them. And crucial to that is the idea and understanding of the Qayyim, not as a figure who is in seclusion or in occlusion, somebody who is not present, but rather somebody who is absolutely and totally present. As the Prophet ﷺ said that the world would not exist for one day if he were not present. And he is the focal point around which we gather in our seeking to eliminate injustice, to eliminate oppression, and this is a source of inexhaustible strength to us, not the other, when we look back, we become depressed, we become sad, we become, we, are, we can't think of anything to do because the forces are so great. But once we understand that starting with ourselves and then going to our mate and then our children and then our neighbors and so forth, that we have an opportunity, a golden opportunity, which allows us to resist frustration, that however hopeless and dismal things seem to be, it gives us a way of thinking that there is a way forward, a way that we can combine with the forces of justice to face the world that we see now is filled with injustice and oppression. This is the nature of all of these talks. So take this as an introduction to the talks. And now I will finish with this, with saying Salatu Wasalam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa alayhi wa sallam. And ask you to look at your website or our website or whichever website you're looking at on, on YouTube or whatever. And listen to these and pay attention slowly, slowly, because it represents, as I say, I believe, Allahu Alam, of course, a way forward so as to avoid this tremendous depression and sadness which current events bring us to. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.